What is going on, all you Pokemon Collective Maniacs out there? This is Ryan, the Pika Pika Papa, and I don't know if you remember a couple weeks ago, but we did a really cool comparison. We looked at the biggest and the baddest PSA 10 alt arts from the Sword and Shield block, and we compared it to a same character card from much earlier in the Pokemon eras. We're talking about some first editions, we had Neo Destinies, you know, we had all kinds of cool cards, but we were comparing the ultra modern PSA 10s at a certain price point, say $1,200, to an older card at the exact same price point and it was just an interesting comparison you could spend twelve hundred dollars on an ultra modern card and this is the population and this is the psa 10 gem rate or you could spend that same twelve hundred dollars on an older card right which has a much lower most of these were psa 9s a most much lower population much lower gem rate etc etc the intent of that video wasn't to say that one was better than the other, but the real the real process of that and the real purpose of it was just to say that there's always decisions to make with your investment dollars. You can go ultra modern, which has a tendency to be more volatile, right? You see big spikes, big drops all over the place, or you can go with some of the older cards, which I will tell you, in my experience, now I have collected true vintage, right? I come from a sports card space. I've got cards from 1911. I've got cards from the 30s, the 40s, the 50s. In my mind, that is true vintage, and I will tell you this, that at least in the sports card space, which is not a one-for-one -one to Pokemon, but my older cards have been very steady. They've given me a steady growth rate versus some of the volatility that we typically see in modern cards, right? And I have always really appreciated that about true vintage cards. And I say true vintage cards, and I'm not saying this is a bad thing or a mean thing, like it just is what it is, but I don't really consider any of our Pokemon cards vintage yet. 1999 isn't vintage. Now in 20, 30 years from now, of course, we'll consider that vintage, but I still consider them origin sets or older cards or, or something like that, because if you've only collected in the TCG space, again, not a bad thing, but if you've only collected in the TCG space, you really haven't had the experience of collecting vintage cards and vintage older things from those earlier, early eras with the really low population. So it's going to be interesting, but one of the things that I learned and what I found out when I was doing that exercise is there is a lot of really cool cards that don't have a lot of love. I'm talking every card on this list is below $70, and most of them are below $50, which is incredibly exciting. We're going to look at some of the biggest and the baddest names in the Pokemon space. We're going to look at some cards that have some awesome art. Yes, awesome art does exist in these older sets. We're going to look at ones with really low populations, and even in PSA 9s, most of these are below $100. $50. It is just a ton of fun to look at these. Again, I'm an ultra modern guy. I still love ultra modern Pokemon, but for me, this is just a really cool way to look at it and look at other ways to diversify the col my collection and maybe to add some stability, some steady growth along with the volatility of ultra modern stuff. So this is going to be a ton of fun. I've got six awesome cards on this list. And if you all find value in it, I promise I will do more of this in the future. So with that being said, if you enjoy this type of content, if you want to see more, we'd love to have you as a member of the family. Hit that subscribe button. If you have questions or comments, drop them down below. And as always, if you like what you see, give us a big Big old thumbs up. I appreciate it more than you know, and I hope you guys enjoy the video. So with all of that out of the way, let's get into some of these cards. Now, I do two at a time, and this one, we're going to start off with the Arceus Platinum series. And the one thing that I wanted to do when I was going through this list was I wanted to find cards that had exciting art on it. Now, the art from back then compared to the art now, well, you can't compare it. There's no comparison whatsoever. The technology wasn't there. The desire to have the type of art that we have now wasn't there. But I did want to say, hey, listen, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking if these cards are going to be desirable in the future, we all know that art is a key part in driving the value of cards in the long run. So I did want to find some cards that had some really cool art. So we'll start with that Charizard right there, that Cracked Ice Hollow from the Arceus Platinum set. Again, that card is really, really stunning. The, the Cracked Ice Hollow in the back jumps off the page at you. I do have that card in a PSA 9 holder, and I can totally attest to the fact that that card is absolutely amazing. And then when you look at the PSA 9 population, there's only 200 of nine of those in PSA 9s, and there's only 25 of them in PSA 10s. And when you think about the older cards, that population is very well protected. I'm not saying that there won't be more 9s and more 10s in the future. I guarantee there will be, but you won't see it influxing. There's still a lot of Sword and Shield left to be ripped. There's still tons and tons and tons of Sun and Moon left to be ripped, right? Like, there's just going to be a lot more of those cards that are introduced into the general population. But when you look at a Charizard like this, 
that's 15 years old. You don't run a risk of a whole bunch of them coming out and being you know, graded in PSA 9s or PSA 10s. So the population there is relatively protected. Now, as I always say, population is only one part of the equation. That's the supply side. The demand side, you got to have it too. So you have to believe that in the future, there are going to be people who want this Charizard Cracked Ice Hollow from Arceus Platinum because if nobody wants it, it doesn't matter how rare it is. It doesn't matter how beautiful the art is, right? So that's one of the things that you have to consider. As these cards do start to get older and older, is maybe older cards start to rotate into what I would consider vintage here in the Pokemon space. Is there going to be a new desire for them? Are people going to want the older classic cards? That is yet to be determined, but I do think that this card, it's got a Charizard, it's got awesome all cracked ice in the background, like the population is low, and a raw card is going for $35. That's an absolute steal. Now, PSA 9's at $140. Even at that price point, I'm going to tell you right now, even at $140, I still think that's a pretty darn good price point, considering that the cost to get a PSA 10 is going to be through the roof since there's only 20 25 of them. The other card, you know, I'm a Gengar card, card guy, so I had to include Gengar on here. And this is from the same set, but look at that art. Now we're starting to see some art. Sure, it's 15 years old, but I love the way Gengar is tilted at an angle and he's crawling out of the card right now. This level X is just absolute awesomeness. Now, this is the most expensive card from a raw card that we're going to see throughout this whole video, but it's still sub $70, which is just infinitesimal in price compared to a lot of these ultra modern cards that we're seeing. Heck, the Magic Card from Paldea Evolved is a $100 card right now, or you could get this 15 year old level X Gengar for $66.98. It's just absolutely crazy. Again, not saying one was right or one's Wrong, but it's just interesting to see where you could be spending your dollars. Now, from a PSA 9 population, hey, there's a little bit more of them. There's 313 of them versus the 209 from that Charizard. And the PSA 10 population's higher too. There's 45 of those in a PSA 10. But again, remember, just because the population's bigger doesn't mean anything because the price is higher because the demand is higher for this card. So PSA 9s of this are going to come in just under $300. The last one sold for about $290. So again, two really awesome cards. But even in the grand scheme of things, if you wanted to buy them in a PSA 9 holder, they are relatively approachable from a pricing perspective and from a raw card, really approachable price points there as well. Next two cards right here, I am in love with both of these cards. I'm saying it right now in front of all of you. Both of these will absolutely be in my collection. I love that Pikachu 035 Black Star promo from the Nintendo era. Absolutely epic. Raw cards have a price right now of $30. And then when you look at it in PSA 9, there's less than 100 PSA 9s of those out there. There's only 96 in a PSA 9 holder, only 11 in a PSA 10. The last PSA 9s have been selling for about $125 again. And uh, if the market ever rotates and it starts falling in love with some of these older, more origin era type cards, I think this card has a huge upside. I love the fact that he is just lightning out right there on the card. You got the black in the background. You got the dazzle. I love everything about this card. And 125 bucks for a PSA 9 is an absolute steal in my opinion. Then you have the Zapdos card. I saw a bunch of, not this individual card, but these types of promos when we were at the uh, Collecticon last weekend. And I will tell you right now, the PSA 10s for these hollows were selling for incredible amounts of money. It was just absolutely crazy to see those variants selling for so much. But it's the border. The borders are fire. I absolutely love the way they sparkle all the way around. I love the background. Zapdos is one of the most graded Pokemon every single month. We do the PSA grading card video where we look at the most graded Pokemon and Zapdos is always on there. There's tons of demand, tons of love for that Pokemon. Again, that raw card is coming in at $56. And when you look at the PSA population reports, there's only 71 PSA 9s and only 16 PSA 10s. Again, the PSA 9 price right there at $150. It just feels, oh, it feels so approachable and it feels so great to get a card of this age with this kind of background and foil and awesomeness. And oh, I just love this card so very much. So I think these two cards are an absolute steal. That Pikachu's fire and that Zapdos is fire as well. Now, the last two cards that we're going to talk about right here, I'm not 100% sure that I have a strong conviction in the upside of these in the long run, if I'm being completely honest. I don't think the Blastoise is going to have enough collectability. I don't think there's going to be enough demand for it in the future. The Aerodactyl, same thing, you know, it's got a pretty high PSA population. We'll talk about that in the beginning or here in just a minute. But what I want to say about that Aerodactyl is just, I love the fact that that is a first edition fossil card and that is a pre-release stamped card too. Oh my gosh. Everything about that gets me so excited. Like I would hold that card and I would just think about the journey that it's been on. Like how many different hands this has passed through and how many different stores has it been in. I, that's one of the things that I love about vintage so much is just thinking about the journey that all of these cards had to go on before they finally ended up in my hand. And again, the PSA nines of that card, there is 961 in PSA 
PSA 9. So that is not a small population. Now there's only 61 PSA 10s. And even though there's almost a thousand in PSA 9s, guess what? It's still going to set you back $155. Compare that $155 Aerodactyl PSA 9 price to some of the other PSA 9s. That Zapdos, right? It was cheaper at 150 in PSA 9. That Pikachu that we just looked at, that was cheaper in a PSA 9 at 130 bucks. I mean, even the Charizard was cheaper. Like, Think about it and put it into comparison. Aerodactyl's big. Aerodactyl has a big chase card in Lost Origin, which is going to keep that name top of mind for a while. But hey, listen, this card, again, Fossil, first edition, pre-release. I think this is a absolute stunner of a card. And then the Blastoise, we're going back to another Cracked Ice Hollow. I had to double check the population reports, but the reality is those pops are correct. There is only 60 of that card in a PSA 9. There is only seven in a PSA 10. Even though the population is so incredibly low, a PSA 9 of that card is only going to set you back 40 bucks. Why? Because there's not a lot of demand for it. Not a lot of people are out there hunting for it. So again, these are two cards where I'm not saying that they're going to have the greatest long-term price appreciation. But if you want some really cool cards, some cards that'll stand out in your collection, some cards that might give you the opportunity for some decent growth, who knows? You know, I'm kind of on the fence about which way these are going to go. I think both of these cards are really, really awesome. Again, Heart, Soul, Gold, get Gold, Soul, Silver, Unleashed, and that Duatsi promo right there. I'm just really excited about these cards and if you all find value in this if you enjoy this type of content where we look a little bit deeper at some of the cards that are a little more in the way back machine let me know in the comments down below nothing's going to change we're still going to stay ultra modern focused that's where my jam is but i did really get a lot of excitement and a lot of joy and i had a lot of fun looking at some of these older cards so if that's something you'd like to see more of let me know in the comments down below and if you enjoyed the video give us a thumbs up and if you haven't joined the family yet we'd love it if you hit the subscribe button i hope you have a great one thank you so much and i'll talk to you later see everybody Bye.